but we will start with the with the points as they are in the old system today uh-huh. uh, and it will it will move forwards it will therefore probably take you know, four eight, years time it might be a few years it might even be four years yeah. for that influence of the previous system to to gradually be be uh, be, be ruled out yeah. but this system will be much more dynamic and it will change much more quickly so you know if, if you if you're a nation who who is ranked because of the old system in the wrong place yeah. as soon as you play a few matches then very quickly your ranking will adjust welcome to studio hockey So it's the middle of November. In Lausanne, Switzerland, where the FIH is based, first snow has arrived. But that did not stop FIH from launching a couple of press releases in recent days, announcing some novelties following the meeting of their executive board last week. In today's podcast we will only be addressing two of these. So the first ever World Cup to be held in two different countries will not be on today's agenda nor the very controversial choice for Bouman Eswar for the Men's World Cup again, meaning three out of four most recent World Cups will be hosted by India. The choice to start a World Cup for Hockey Fives by 2023, a possibly fatal choice for our 11v11 game of hockey, will also have to wait for another time, as will the launch of the FIH Intercontinental Cup basically the second division for the FIH Pro League, and we will discuss these choices in separate podcasts in the near future. So make sure you subscribe to the Studio Hockey Podcast in your favorite podcast app, so you will not miss these interesting episodes as well. However, today we will limit ourselves to less controversial, though important changes. First, we will discuss the new system for our global ranking to be launched in January of 2020. Secondly, we will talk about the road to Bhubaneswar and future World Cups. Whether these will all be hosted in India is for some other time. Who better to talk us through the new global ranking and the new pathway to qualify for a World Cup than John Wyatt, Sports and Development Director for the FIH. Welcome, John, uh, back on the on the podcast from uh, Studio Hockey. Uh, last time we spoke was in March uh, 2019, so March of this year, when it was announced that the FIH would uh, launch a new world ranking system uh, as of January of next year. Um, meanwhile, uh, you had a, a executive board meeting with the FIH uh, last week, uh, where I guess most of the details around this world ranking were ironed out uh, and uh, it's ready to go because okay you launched uh, you know a couple of press releases so uh, it's ready to go for January uh, uh, 2020 um, can you tell us again why do we need a new world ranking um, yeah I mean there are many reasons but the the the, the simplest way of explaining it is that the current world ranking system, which is based on tournament results, mm-hmm. uh, means that there are a relatively small number of matches over the course of a year that an international team plays that contribute to their world ranking. Mm-hmm. So we looked at all of the international matches that have happened every year for the last four years, and uh, only about 20% of those matches take place in ranking tournaments. Yeah. and therefore contribute towards the world ranking table. So if you're a particularly a, a sort of middle to lower ranked nation, you may only participate in an FIH ranking tournament once or twice in a four year period. So it's very difficult for you to demonstrate to your to your funding bodies, to your to your government, to your sponsors that you are progressing. Uh-huh. Because It's very, very rare that you get the chance to earn these ranking points. So we've been looking at this for a long time. uh, And as you know, we've been running various models. um, And for this year, we've we've been running an algorithm and and, and improving that algorithm over the course of the year Mm -hmm. that looks at a match-based system. So every official test match, whether that takes place as just a match between two nations, uh, is recorded on our uh, tournament management system, or whether that is the World Cup final, uh, every single one of those matches will contribute towards uh, your world ranking. 
which means that there's uh, it's it's much more uh, dynamic, uh, mm-hmm. much more interesting from a from a fan from a from a media perspective. Uh, we'll be able to talk about the upcoming matches that are about to happen, and if Team X beats Team Y, then this will impact on the world ranking system in this in this way, and mm-hmm. therefore it will move up uh, three places or whatever it might be. So it's it's a much more simple system. It's a much more dynamic system, and it also removes uh, some of the subjectivity that the previous system had where we had to try and uh, agree between the various continents what the relative importance of coming third in one continental championships and how that compared with coming third in a different continental championship where you had different levels of, of opposition yeah so now it's a much more simple system it purely looks at the relative strengths of the two teams who play and then there is a points exchange based on the result Yeah, yeah. So at the moment, how many nations are ranked in your FIH Global Ranking as is of today? As of today, there are 90 uh, men's teams ranked and 75 uh, women's teams ranked. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, as of last year, there were 97 men's teams ranked, but because the current system you you lose points over a course of a year and 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 you know they they reduce by 25% each year so if you haven't won any points in the last four years then you drop off the system yeah. so that's another benefit of this system is any team that plays international matches will have a world ranking okay so the new the new world ranking will have 137 nations more or less uh, it will start and this is an important point so the new world ranking on the 1st of january 2020 will start with the number of points and the number of nations who are in the current system Mm -hmm. so the the world rankings that were published in september won't change now until january so that will be the starting point but as soon as a nation plays who doesn't have a world ranking it's not one of those 90 men or 75 female teams Uh then they will get a world ranking okay so will, will that mean that that the current world ranking those points will still be in there in January? Correct. So you won't go uh you, you won't do the back calculation of let's say the last two or three years uh, on based on the new system. No, I think I think uh you you, you can't do that because uh the coaches and high performance directors set their calendars and their schedules based on what was the system then. Mm-hmm. We're introducing a new system. And they may have had a completely different approach to their international programs. So no, we will we will start with the with the points as they are in the old system today, uh-huh. uh, and it will it will move forwards. It will therefore probably take you four know, years. Time it might be a few years. It might even be four years yeah. for that influence of the previous system to to gradually be be uh, be, be ruled out. Yeah. But this system will be much more dynamic and it will change much more quickly. So. You know, if, if you if you're a nation who who is ranked because of the old system in the wrong place, yeah. as soon as you play a few matches, then very quickly your ranking will adjust. Yeah, uh, well, there will be, but still, let, let's let let's say like this that the the nations who had the benefit of the old system, uh, because possibly, and I know it's subjective, and, and but, but possibly because of a wrong weighting of the continental system or yep. what, whatever reason, they will still carry on that benefit for yeah two or three years more or less i don't know a period a period period. yeah 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 okay um can you so can you dive a little bit deeper into the details of how this new world ranking will work actually um so that it's it's match based instead of tournament based that is the essential change but but uh, uh, what kind of points can we expect what uh, kind of uh Tournaments or games will be weighted heavier or, or more important than than others. Sure. Um, so uh, it's it's all of this detail will be up on our website. Is uh-huh. this the first point? So uh, and it's I will try and explain it simply, but it like all these things, it's 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 it's, um, it's complicated. <laughs> it is. It has to be complicated, right? Yeah. So yeah, when we launch the system in January, uh, there'll be very clear explanation as to what the algorithm is, how it works, uh, what are the factors that that, uh, that input into it. Um, I've also been sharing this system with uh, with continental federations, with coaches, with performance directors over the last few few months, um, and I have currently accumulated about 40 
key questions uh, that keep coming back. And so I've we, we've drafted some responses. So when we launch the system, there will be a QA and a on as well. So hopefully uh-huh. that will help explain. Yeah. Uh, and there will, there will be lots of other questions and we will continue to answer them. But I will try and explain it as simply as I can. So when two nations play against each other, before the match, we look at uh, the number of ranking points that each of those nations has. Yeah. And the difference in those uh, those ranking points um, is a multiplier that is applied to the number of points that they will gain or lose by winning or losing that match. Okay. So the 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 specific number of points uh, that is exchanged, and this is a key point. So if if team A wins and they gain ten points, then the team B that loses loses ten points. There yes. is always a net zero. There's a net exchange of points. Mm-hmm. So the way the algorithm works is uh, if, if you win a match, the starting point is you will win 10 points. Mm-hmm. That 10 then has two factors applied to it. The first is the, uh, the, the ratio, the difference of points between the two nations. Yeah. So if you are a lower ranked team that beats a higher ranked team, then that factor is more than one. So rather than getting 10 points for the win, mm-hmm. you might 15 or, or, or 16 or 17 points yeah. and equally therefore the losing team would lose 15 or 16 points yes if the team that you beat are below you then the the, the factor is less than one so mm-hmm. rather than getting 10 points for beating a team that according to the rankings you should beat yeah. you might only gain five points and they might only lose five points okay. so that's the first factor so it starts at 10 you apply that factor which can go up to 20 or down to zero that's those are the parameters yeah and then you and then you apply. So the there, there is factor. there is a possibility. Sorry for interrupting. But <clears throat> there is a possibility when when a, a really higher ranked nation beats a really lower ranked nation that this will be a really zero sum game where there's zero points to be won or zero points to be lost. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. And the reason for putting that in is to not penalize. You know, if we go to a a, a continental event where maybe a, a team who are ranked. 45th, 50th in the world play against a team who are ranked in the top three, mm-hmm. uh, it, it would be unfair to, to penalize them overly. So okay. that we've put a ceiling in um, okay. to say the maximum that you can earn, you can gain is is two times the factor. So two times that would be up to 20 points yeah. and the minimum would be down to zero. Okay. So that's, that's the first factor. The second factor is then the importance of the match. Yeah. So this is whether it is the World Cup or whether it is uh, a continental championships or whether it is a test match between two nations yeah and that, the, the, the factors there um which will have a significant impact because we want to continue our tournaments to be the main focus of of, of our uh, of our sport so the olympic games and the world cup will have a factor of 10 okay uh, an individual test match has a factor of one so world yeah. cup and this is 10 times as important uh, next down from that, you have the Continental Championships, mm-hmm. which have a factor of six, as do our qualifying events. So the final round of the qualifiers for World Cups and Olympic Games, they also have a factor of six. Mm-hmm. You come down one to the Pro League, which has a factor of five, and the new Intercontinental Cup, which you'll have seen yeah. was announced, which is for the next teams below the Pro League. So again, that has a factor of five. Mm-hmm. And then there are, and the details will be on the website, there are then some uh, as you go down into um, continental qualifiers that get you into a continental championships, then they will have a lower factor yeah. or uh, an invitational tournament such as the Sultan Aslan Shah tournament that will have a lower factor as well because it's an invitational. So okay, more but, but than still, test match, yeah, but, but, okay, but still there there would be an increase uh, of points, so there will be a multiplicator factor for invitational tournaments. So yes. if 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 Sultan Aslam will be worth more than a regular test series, correct? Uh, well, than a, than a one to one test series, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and but remember, the opportunity is there to gain more points. Yeah. The risk is there to lose more points. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe it will balance out. But uh, yeah. Uh, what still will seem strange to me is is that invitational tournaments also get a a a a a higher multiplication factor uh why is that i i get actually i get why world cup olympics that that makes sense all all of the official frh uh games and tournaments and events the qualifiers uh the continentals that all will all all makes perfect sense to me yeah 
for me, an invitational tournament, I should rank that more or less at the same level as any other practice game. Uh, official uh, official test series practice yeah, game. Understood, understood. So um, the, the the main reason is because we want to encourage tournament play. We, we still want to we still believe that hockey looks good mm-hmm. in a tournament situation, yeah. and we want to encourage you know crowds and good for fans and broadcast. Uh-huh. And so it's a it's a small encouragement. As in, uh, just to give you a, an example, so um, a an invitational tournament with four nations, uh, four four or more nations actually. Yeah. Um, uh, whether that's the Sultan Aslan Shah or whether that's simply four local nations yep. get together and have an invitation tournament, the multiplication factor is two. Okay. So it's not it's not five or six, right? No. Uh huh. Yeah. No. No. Okay. Makes sense. Um, and and so the multiplication factor for the continentals is it, six. It's uh, right. yeah. Um, yeah. But okay. I still still I guess because the difference will still be very important between the continentals. Where where oceanic cha- continental championships, yeah, basically there are two teams, plus a couple of others. Uh, European championships has six or seven of or of of top ten teams, uh, yeah. which is different from again an Asian or a Pan American championship with only one or two teams uh, at a high level. Yeah, but they they each get a multiplication factor of six. They, they do, and and we ran we've run the model during 2019, so we've mm-hmm. seen how it uh, how it worked yeah. for, for all of those examples. And the balance, it comes back to that same point. The balance is, yes, in Europe, the champions of Europe have the chance to gain more points because they're playing more matches and they're playing more matches against Betsy. So the champions of Europe will win more points. Uh-huh. But the, uh, the teams who don't do so well in the Euro nations do worse than the teams who don't do so well in some mm-hmm. of the other continents. Yeah. So you have this you have this balance effect. Uh-huh. Okay. Um yeah, yeah, it's still, still, yeah, okay. We will have to, we will have to wait and see what what the what the actual. I think that's a really important point. So, uh, the system is not perfect. There, uh-huh. there is no system that can be perfect. Okay. Uh-huh. So, what has been approved and what we've agreed is that we will roll it out from January the first, yeah. and then we very carefully will be monitoring it. And I am a hundred percent confident that the hockey community around the world will be also providing good feedback for us. So we say, <laughs> yep. uh, um, and, and we will, we will reserve the right to make some minor adjustments to the system as, as we spot things. Yep. That, that's if we spot anomalies or things that just don't, don't make sense, which uh-huh. we've tried to iron out as many of those as possible by modeling it this year. Uh-huh. But the main thing that we cannot model is how coaches and performance directors will change their schedules. Yeah. That all we can do is we can run the system and then we can observe it. Mm-hmm. And you know, there are risks around, manipulation there are risks around you know uh, scheduling of men- will, will teams you know agree to play matches and then and then actually go oh well no we don't want them to have ranking we want them to be friendlies because we're worried about losing points uh-huh. so that's the sort of thing that we can only all we can do is roll it out and see and, and most team sports now have a match-based system mm-hmm. similar not the same but similar to this uh-huh. so it, it feels like it's the right way to go as a sport uh, but we will need to monitor it very carefully. Okay. Have you have you taken into account the the difference between and we spoke about this the last time as well. Uh, but there's a difference between uh, countries who have the philosophy of really prioritizing their national team and and playing international hockey, and there are a couple of countries, mainly Europe, uh, where there's a high uh, priority on on the domestic league, where club hockey is is almost as important as international hockey um, certainly for the players because that's where they make their money uh, in, in those countries today already there, there, there's always the, the, the fight going on between the domestic league the clubs who are paying the, the players and, and the national team who has to yeah, go through all these qualifying uh, tournaments and events and want to play as much as possible in international hockey um, yeah. and yeah there are only so many days in a year of course yeah. uh, has, has that been monitored and has that been looked at or, or it has and and um what was and i have to say i was slightly surprised um but actually the difference in number of international matches played particularly by the top 15 to 20 nations is really quite small okay i was expecting that to your point to be a much greater difference between uh, a nation who maybe didn't have a strong domestic league and really focused on their national program uh, uh-huh. and australia for example yeah uh, that's changed now with with hockey one but yeah. 
uh, you know, but but actually no, the the differences in number of matches played are partly because of pro league. So all those nations playing in pro league, obviously for yeah. the first six months of the year, play the same number of matches. Mm-hmm. But no, the, so we did look at it, but the difference is is nominal. Okay. Good. Um, will this system also be applied to indoor hockey, or is this a new world ranking only going to be applied to outdoor? So we're going to start it with outdoor. Uh, the, the, the vision would be in the future we would use it for indoor, but we had to sort of uh, uh, choose a point in time that we want to introduce this, and we've chosen January 1st for the outdoor. It wouldn't make sense to introduce uh, into indoor in January, which is halfway through the European indoor season, uh-huh. and also only you know, 14, 15 months before the Indoor World Cup. So I think if, if it goes well, and hopefully it does go well outdoor, then it would be something that we would look at uh, potentially introducing into indoor hockey after the 2021 World Cup, so for the next four-year cycle. Okay, so then, yeah, but normally then it, the idea is to go with the similar system, with the same system. Uh, ultimately, I think so, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that, that covers a lot of the, the, the questions uh, since I, I guess you're still not able to, to go into detail about a changed world ranking based upon the system. Well, not much will change because we will still have the points from the old system. So, uh We will start, we change we... between now and January the 1st. Ah. And then, and then, but the first official test match that is played in 2020, at that point, it'll start changing. It and start then changing. throughout Pro League season, and we'll see a much more dynamic movement of teams up and down during Pro League. And then it'll change again during the Olympics. And then there are the lower teams will all be playing matches and tournaments as well. So it'll be really interesting to see how it plays out. Okay, good. Uh, let's all move on to, uh, to, to our second topic the, the road to the World Cup. Um, There's been uh, a change in, in, in our road to Tokyo uh, with the Olympic qualifiers who were played in, an, in a new system with these uh, yeah, double headers uh, at, at the higher ranked nations' uh, home. Um, and uh, to my surprise, because I, I was not a big fan of it in the beginning, but to my surprise, it, it, it delivered and, 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 and made, made for some beautiful hockey and, and beautiful stories. Um, so, yeah, I guess, I guess this time around, yeah, it absolutely delivered, and 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 uh, uh, I guess the, the system has has proven its worth um, for the World Cup now, the next World Cup, uh, the one the one again in Bhubaneswar. You will do a new system, though, more or less the same, but with an actual home and away. Why the changes? So. Um Okay, think, explain. Play, maybe first explain what is the exactly road to the next World Cup, uh, because it's still continentals, but there uh, the, the 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 qualification for Olympic qualify for the World Cup qualifiers will also be through continentals. Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, the the system that had been agreed previously um, and published about the World Cup for the, the, the next World Cup 2022, the qualification system, mm-hmm. was exactly the same as the system we've just used for the Olympic Games in Tokyo, yeah. which was that we would have the host would qualify automatically, the five continental champions, and then and then the remaining places would come from these qualification yeah. uh, double headers that have just been played over uh, last month. Um, which, to your point, I agree, were incredibly successful and threw up some fantastic matches, some incredibly close matches, um, and lots of uh, lots of good uh, coverage as well as some good debate on on social media, which is which is great. Good Absolutely, for, for, for once, for once we agree. Excellent. <laughs> um, so that so so the, the the plan for the World Cup is very similar uh, with a few improvements. So, I mean, the first obvious thing is for the World Cup, we have 16 nations, not 12. So we have more requirement for qualification events. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously there'll be an additional four places. Therefore, you have an additional eight teams involved, which is good to have more teams involved in a, in a World Cup qualifier. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the second change is that one of the big challenges this time around was organizing these qualification matches six weeks after knowing who was playing against who. Yeah. what the draw was so we can't we don't know who is in the pools until the end of the continental championships which mm-hmm. was the first week of september and then we had these matches six and seven weeks later so yeah. for hosts to organize to sell tickets to promote to market to find sponsors to get broadcasters on board was a real challenge in that in that short period of time <coughs> so what we're now looking at is moving uh, having creating a greater amount of time for that to be organized and also for the away teams to book their travel arrangements 
So we're looking at holding these uh, qualification events in March. So it'll okay. be March of 2022. So eight months after the Continental Championships finish when you can do the draw and know who is playing against who. Okay, can I interrupt immediately here? And you know where I'm going now? Please. In March? Come on. That's yeah. in, 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 in the top end of the domestic league of European hockey. It it's, will it's, kill European hockey. Uh, so, no, it won't, it won't kill European hockey. The, the pro league already exists between January and June. So the, the which, challenge... Which, which, is which, is, challenge. which is contested, but okay. It's agreed, but it's contested. We don't like it. The, but, the, yeah. the challenge for, for us now to work with the pro league nations is to find a window that will work for these qualifiers so that it's during the pro league period. You're absolutely right. Um, I mean, in truth, in, in all likelihood, four, three or four of the continental champions who will qualify directly for the World Cup will already be in the Pro League. Mm -hmm. So we're probably talking about five or six Pro League nations together with 15, 14 or 15 non-Pro League nations. So mm -hmm. I agree, we, we need to find a window within the Pro League. But actually, this is about hockey for everyone, not just for the top 11 nations in the world, right? So um, we will hold the qualification events in March. Um, and then the second improvement, uh, because it was it worked pretty well, but it wasn't particularly fair to have the lower ranked nation in the current Tokyo qualifiers playing both matches away from home, mm -hmm. having to travel and then play the, the the better team twice in a row away from home. Yeah. So uh, well, it, I, it, I, it, I disagree again, but but yeah, and I know this 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 has been the discussion on social media and 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 probably elsewhere and among high performance managers and with, with you guys as well. And of course, there, there, there's the, the idea of yeah, yeah the, the home and away should be more fair. Yep. On the other hand, there, there, there is a reasoning also why a higher ranked nation could should earn the the, the respect of, of of his previous performances as well, and, yep. and 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 get this little advantage of playing twice at home as well. Understood, understood. But we feel that it's enough of an advantage to have uh, the draw being seeded. So uh -huh. if you're a, if you're a better nation, you play against a lower ranked nation. Yep. For uh -huh. us, is 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 a good advantage. Yeah. And we should have a home and away. The other big advantage of having home and away, as well as making it fairer, is that the the lower ranked nation then gets to host one of the top nations of the world coming down to their you know their home their home and to promote hockey and to demonstrate and show hockey at the very very highest level mm -hmm. so that match would happen first the lower ranked nation would host first yeah. so it, starts, it would start off at zero zero you have that match and then two weeks later you play uh, at the better the the, the the higher ranked nation you play the second match so again the higher ranked nation gets a slight advantage in knowing they're hosting in the team in the match that they know what they have to do in order to qualify mm -hmm. yeah also, so that, it will it will it will increase costs for both nations. Uh, it will increase it will increase costs compared to this time for one nation. No, for both for both because now the, the the away team, okay, they have they have they still have the, the the travel cost that they had before, but now they also have the, the cost of hosting an international top event. You have to you have to get to have stands. You have to have a, a national stadium. Not everybody not everybody has a stadium ready, so. You sure. need to invest in that event to make it a big event as well. So and, you will, have, and, and those those costs, I don't have to tell you, they are significant. Yeah, uh, and there's also the great opportunity of selling tickets, TV revenue, uh, uh, sponsors, etc. Uh -huh. Okay. So you know, yeah. there's the opportunity to offset some of those costs as well. Yeah, yeah maybe. Um, so then, and then, uh, then the third change, which is is necessity, because we don't have a series a hockey series or a hockey series finals anymore to qualify. So the mm -hmm. next question is, how do you be, how do you get into those qualifying events? How, yeah. You know, how do you determine those twenty? And so that will be done uh, using a system that has been used previously, which is where we take uh, we take the world ranking. Uh, as it is at the end of the previous um, global event. So for the World Cup in 2022, we would take the world rankings as they are on the final day of the Tokyo uh, Olympic Games. Okay. We look at the top, uh, well, it's it's you have to take the, the hosts out and then you have to take the five continental champions out and then you go, right, who are the next 20? Yeah. Which continent are they from? And then that that gives you the number of places in the qualifying tournament for each continent. And then okay. in 2021, you host the, the, the five continents host their continental championships. 
and all the teams know that going in there are however many places it is there are five places available so yeah. if i win my continental championship i qualify directly as the as the champions through to the world cup yeah. and if i come two three four or five then i go into the qualifier which will take place in march of 2022 okay. so in august of 2020 the the quotas when the matches will be what the qualifiers will be that will all be confirmed mm-hmm and very clearly communicated so that every nation knows they're going to their continental championships the following year and they know what they have to do in order to get through to the qualifiers. So so correct me if I'm wrong here because now if I assume that that o- o- oceanic continentals sure. uh, Australia will qualify directly um, because they, they they will win their qual- they, they will win their assumptions here. Huh? Uh, they will win their they will win their oh, continentals. Yeah. Huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, so that leaves New Zealand for for and, and, and Papua New Guinea and Fiji and whoever uh, is playing there to to uh, to fight for a spot on on the next World Cup or, or Olympics. Um, but so if you take out Australia already from those world ranking, uh, there's only one spot left yep. for Oceania. Yep and Australia will get that one spot because they, they, they will win their 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 their, their continental, or is it? No, so you have two spots in that particular example because okay. you look at the top twenty six in the world uh-huh. and you'd go, okay, one of them is going to win the, the Oceania Championships. There are two nations in the top twenty six, uh-huh. so there are two spots available okay. to Oceania: one to the winner and one to the qualifier. Okay, not an easy system. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's. Yeah, it's not easy to explain, but it's um, it's as straightforward as it can be. I mean, you know, the 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 alternative is you simply take base it on world rankings. Uh-huh. Um, but what we feel this does is it adds excitement to the continental championships uh-huh. because going into continental championships, you know that if you win, which you've always known, you qualify yeah. directly. But if not, you know what you have to do in order to get into the qualifier. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. Okay, uh, John, uh, thanks very much for your explanations and for your time with us. And uh, I'm uh, really curious what this uh, new world ranking will be doing in, uh, in 2020. Uh, I think that will uh, make some changes, uh, but it will take some time to see the changes happen, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Ed. Thanks for tuning in to Studio Hockey. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. And as always, enjoy your hockey. Bye-bye.